So, welcome everybody to the weird and wonderful world of 3D printing. Uh, I have done an article for the Train Collector Society magazine about this, and I thought you might like a video just showing you what it is and what it can do. The basic principle is you have your spool there with plastic, looks a bit like fishing line, it passes through a drive mechanism here, down the blue Bowden tube, into the box of tricks there, which is the heat inlet, where it's melted and then appears on the work surface here. And over here are all the controls. So let's set something in motion and we can have a look at it. And here we are in action. Uh, what you've got here is a spool of silver. As you can see the feed there very slowly turning as it pushes the filament down into the hot end. And you can just see there the silver coming out and being printed. Now it's laying down at this point approximately 0.2 of a millimetre every pass. And if you notice you can see the line that it's putting down now appearing as it works its way across. What we're actually doing here is printing what they call a raft uh, because we're actually going to print something very small. Now this is going to take another 10 or 15 minutes so we'll come back when there's something else to look at. Well it's uh, completed its work as you can see the big piece of silver there is the raft simply to hold the very small item that it's actually printed. This took roughly 15 minutes. Now it just peels off the bed like so And we can bring it over to the workstation. So having peeled it off its backing, off the raft as they call it, there we are. One minute motorway Jaguar with a new, or it will be when it's glued in, rear bumper. And the other great thing about it is you can get a huge range of different coloured plastics. So not only can you manufacture them and everything, you can manufacture it in any colour that your heart desires. No more painting, masking up, you just print it and out it comes. Simplicity itself. Later that same evening, I notice now that we've switched the spoons and we put red in. The machine is doing its thing. Over here you can see the controls. At the bottom, you should just be able to make out on the left the uh, temperatures, 200 degrees, which is what the nozzle is running at, which is melting the plastic. And then on the right, 60 degrees, which is the bed heat. Uh, the bed here is heated to 60 degrees. So as the plastic sticks during the printing process. And if we come down over here, we can see that unlike before, there is no raft with this because we're actually printing something a little larger. So we'll come back again when this is finished. So you can see now, it's well in to its print run and you can start to see the shape appearing. Now bearing in mind that about an hour ago we were making a silver Minic motorway rear bumper, we are now, in the words of John Cleese, producing something completely different. And that's the total versatility of these machines. 
is that basically as long as you don't want anything that's got high tensile strength or is going to operate in too high a temperatures, basically you can make anything which lends itself wonderfully to the plastic licorice and string world of model railways and modelling in general. I mean for the cost of what two brand new Hornby locomotives you can have a machine that will make anything for you and I don't know about you but I found that astounding. So this now is the finished item. Done, fresh off the press. A little dab of glue. Attach it to its printed warhead. Stand it next to the original. Slight difference, I've made the replacement. You can see that a little bit larger and a little bit more resilient at the bottom. But other than that, I don't think that's a bad match. Question is, does it work? Of course it does. Once you've mastered these uh, particular printing skills, what do you want to make? It can go from the missing part, from the loco you're restoring, no need to order a spare, you can just manufacture the bracket to hold it in. You're missing battle space items, the plane or the rockets. Inserts for your Pullman carriages. Snow player for your dock centre. Interior for a transcontinental. Or well, get inventive. I always thought the Minic Motorway Motel should have an interior. So there it is. And last but not least, the trying billboard that never was. With the built in horn unit. All designed and made on the 3D printer. Thanks for watching, thanks for your attention.